The PBA Tour is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with an all-star field vying for the PBA Great Lakes Classic Championship. In our first match, Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. looks to win his second title of this year. He'll face three-time titleist Steve Wilson in the wild card match. The winner advances to the semifinals to play Pete Weber. A victory tonight, the 26th of his Hall of Fame career. The other semifinal match. Hall of Famer, Parker Bone III. Up against Brian Smith, who's in search of his first PBA Tour title ever. where they follow the Spartans and the Wolverines and, of course, loved their Red Wings and were the best of the PBA Tours rolled for this Great Lakes Classic and a week of literally gut-wrenching competition. Hi, good everybody, and welcome. It's been a terrific elimination. We started with a field of 124 times. It's been, well, like going to Madison Square Garden and watching a hockey game because we had a couple of New Yorkers, Brooklyn-born, well, Ernie Schlegel up against Patrick Allen from Terrytown. There was trash talking. There was street bowling. There was, well, intimidation, bait and switch. A couple of tricks that, well, my partner, Randy Peterson, used while he was amassing his 12 PBA Tour titles. What's with that? We got a great field of five here tonight. We got three Hall of Famers and two guys who literally love this format. It's true, Jim. You know, I, I never did a whole lot of trash talking in my career, but there was a great smash mouth action going on all week long leading up to the five finalists tonight. I think one of the stories we need to talk about is Walter Ray Williams Jr. With a win tonight, he will tie Mark, tie Mark Roth for second on the all-time victory list at 34. Parker Bone wins. He goes in front of Mike Albee. But I think the emotional story has to be Pete Weber. He's been chasing his father's 26 titles for the last year and a half, and with a win tonight, he can tie his father. You want pressure? We're going to sense it inside the Spectrum lanes right here. $40,000 on the line and I'm glad I'm not sitting in your expert chair so Mr. Karnak pick a winner well I'm gonna go with Brian Smith I, I think Brian Smith has been bowling better than anyone for four weeks even though this is his first telecast he rooms with Chris Barnes Chris won two weeks ago I think he's getting a little inside info on how to win as we check our bear brackets here at the Great Lakes Classic, it's the Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams Jr., who's the wild card. The wild card entered is the best match play record that didn't qualify for the semis. Up against Steve Wilson in match number one, looking for his fourth PBA title. Walter first on the left-hand lane. Walter struggled a little bit uh, this year with the sport condition, also with his health. He hasn't been feeling, uh, hasn't been feeling up to uh, speed, a little neck problem, problem with his knee. Take a look at uh, how Walter got here. Hopefully tonight to his 34th PBA Tour crown. Now Steve Wilson, the right-hander out of Lake Worth, Florida. Second time we see Steve in the telecast in four weeks. Won the battle at Little Creek with uh, the similar format. Loves bowling on the tough sport condition pattern. A little light. Actually a little heavy. Watch this ball drifting a little bit high. Going to catch a lot of the head pin. Back in reaction. Head pin goes to the sidewall. Trips the 4-7. Nice opening break. And through the round of 32, defeated Chris Barnes, who won a couple of weeks ago. And then a terrific match last night against Steve Hoskins, 3-2, to survive and make it to the TV show. Took care of his good buddy, Steve. Five games. Up, huh? Oh, look at that reaction, man. He's pumped up. 
Starts off with a double. He's excited. You don't see a whole lot of that from Steve. Steve's usually pretty quiet, a little subdued at times. Man, when he gets it going, he gets fired up. You talked about the health problems. Walter Ray describes himself as an old guy falling apart. I mean, he's got a bad knee. He's got a terrible neck. He actually arrived here at the lanes about 7 o'clock tonight, and he carried what is actually the massage therapy that he works with. It's about the size of a home sander. All he was missing was the sandpaper on the back of that thing. Yeah, he actually arrived on a gurney, I think, tonight. Walter shooting cross lane at the tip in. <laughs> I said it looks like a sander. Did we get a shot of it? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, no, no better way to relieve a stiff neck than with a belt sander. <laughs> he says he's feeling a little bit better. I talked to him right before we went on air, and he said he's, he's feeling okay. <laughs> well, we got a little action going down there in the pin deck. Pins are rolling around all over the place. He needed one of his horseshoes to knock that one down, did he? Watch this. This ball's going to go high. Fortunate just leave the four pin. He's like, come on, give me a break. Wait a minute. Here it comes. <laughs> Walter Ray does not miss spares. A six time world horseshoe pitching champion. There's actually a horseshoe named Deadeye after Walter. He uses that same great uh, hand and eye technique, coordination uh, for bowling. Extremely accurate player. That's why I thought Walter would have done a little bit better on this board condition. And, you know, he said himself he's just not making good quality shots. Here's a guy that is. Steve Wilson working on a double. Right lane. Make that a triple. Wilson off to a fast start against Walter Ray. Well, feet don't fail me now. Time again for our Dexter footwork of the pros. My Dexter solution this week was the number seven heel with the number four sole. The approaches this week were very tacky. And being a finesse player, I needed a longer slide to create great leverage. Great shot making is what it's all about this week. And this combination got me over the hump. Steve's got very fast feet, and he it's a must for him to have good footing to get that good leverage to the foul line to make good shots. Bowled well and made the show at Virginia Beach, the battle at Little Creek, and then at Peoria, made it to the top five. Up against Brian Himmler, the chief back then, late September. That was a great match to watch in Peoria. Steve going to a ball that's made out of polyester that doesn't hook. He's going to throw it straight at the 3-6. To make the 3 6 10. Ouch. Finished fifth in Peora, Peoria, and with the prize money in this year's PBA up over 140%. They play for $200,000 in all but the majors. So fifth place in Peoria and here tonight worth $9,000. 40000 to the champion. And being a cagey veteran that Walter is, he takes advantage of the open frame by Steve Wilson. Watch the action of the four pin. Watch this reaction here. Come on. And? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Off three spares and a strike in the four. How about a double? That just shows you how good Walter Ray Williams Jr. is. Taking advantage of that. We are live, Spectrum Lanes, the $200,000 Great Lakes Classic in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Back live at the PBA's $200,000 Great Lakes Classic here at Grand Rapids, Michigan. When we left you after Walter Ray made a double at four and five in uh, those frames, why he was up by seven. Wilson with a strike in the fifth and a spare in the fifth. One, the left-handed lane after a spare in the sixth. Up by one. Walter's uh, not real pleased right now. He's hitting the pocket. He's left. Well, let's see. He went 10-pin, 4-pin, double, 
Ten pin. Ten pin. Again, the best match play record that didn't qualify for the semis. That's how you're the wild card. Plus, Walter had the highest average. That's why he's in. If they tie in match play, it goes to the highest average. Walter Ray's filling frames, hitting the pocket. He's doing what he's supposed to do on the on this uh, sport condition. Steve Wilson, seventh frame, down by one. Why has Steve done so well in this format? Well, Steve Steve really likes match play, number one. He's a, he's a real gritty, gutsy competitor. He loves the head-to-head -head competition. <laughs> Great shot there. Sherry Wilson, Steve's wife, nervously watching here. They like to spend a lot of time as a family at Disney World. Daughter Sarah, her favorite ride is... <laughs> Great shot. Getting back to Steve Wilson, loving the format. He loves the condition. After working with Dave Davis, Hall of Famer, really got his game solid. Doesn't bother him now that where he has to make really, really good shots. He always feels like he's going to make good shots. Taking advantage of the format, the condition. And right now, he's got a nine-pin lead. Possible 245 for Steve if he were to strike out. Possible 236 right now for Walter. And the rear rack. Didn't like the, the setup on the pins on the right lane. A pin or two being off spot could create bad carry, and he's already left enough pin pins. When we were here late last night and talked to all the five that made it to the TV show, Walter said, you know, it's a cliche, but for me to win this tomorrow night, got to just be lucky and bowl well. Well, so far. Well, he's really bowling well right now. Check out the reaction on the last shot. He's like, okay, finally carried the 10-pin. In a position now to put the heat back on Steve Wilson. A strike here on the left lane in ninth frame. He'll take a one-pin lead. He says, man, I, I got one coming my way. Trips to four for a big double. Ball just high. Just love taps on the four. What a great break. Walter says, push it right, push it right. Yes. The man from Cal Poly with a degree in physics got a little help there. Got his own website. While all that was going on, Steve was doing a little sliding and uh, getting the feet work ready. Huh? Checking the approach, making sure he's got a good slide. What a shot. Stevie's answering it. Walter Ray's strike of the ninth with a clutch strike of his own. Wilson up by nine. Hall of Famer Pete Weber gets the winner of this match in semifinal match number two. Up next, Parker Bone, Brian Smith. Here's the situation. Two strikes in the tenth frame. Steve Wilson moves on. Oh. That ball got out in the OB. It's not going to hook back from there on this condition. Very fortunate to just leave the seven pin. Watch how far right this ball gets. And there's just no friction there. Ball's not going to hook back from that spot. Ask him about the lane conditions. He had one word, grinding. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, under, an understatement. All right. Here's our situation. Good count here. To force Walter Ray to get the first hit. Nine spare. Walter Ray's a winner. And we do have a possibility of a tie. And what happens in the tiebreaker? We go to a uh, one ball roll off. And if they tie again, we'll, they'll throw another ball. <laughs> Are you making this up? I'm not making this up. <laughs> As you go? No. Important shot. Needs to count.
So Steve Wilson out of Lake Worth, 222. And another re rack for Walter. Strike nine, a winner here. Strike nine, he's a winner. He moves on. That's a race ball to steady game. Very solid. Steve Wilson's your winner. Walter be the first one to tell you. He didn't throw that shot good. Advances to semifinal match number two. Up against Pete Weber. So Wilson moves on against Pete Weber, who'll try for his 26th PBA title. That was Ty's dad, who's also bowling tonight. But up next, Parker Bone against Brian Smith. Welcome back to Grand Rapids, Michigan. What it looks like on a clear night. A little chilly outside. That's the Grand River that flows through downtown Grand Rapids into Lake Michigan. Some pretty good fall salmon fishing with the run going on right now. So Steve Wilson, 222 against Walter Ray's 211. Well, we told you about Walter Ray and his bowling credentials. You know he's a world-class horseshoe player. He also likes to sneak in 36 holes of golf when he's back home in Ocala, Florida. And speaking of that home, well, he opened it up to us earlier. Two of them are making their second appearance of the swing. What two are they? We apologize. We had a little problem with that uh, tour of Walter Ray's house down there in Ocala, Florida. But I can tell you that there is a screened-in patio with a swimming pool that he and wife Paige like to swim in. And there's also a horseshoe pit at each end, surrounded by some rather expensive stonework. So if Randy and I were to go play horseshoes, the stones would crumble. Back live, Parker Bone looking for his 28th PBA title. The veteran out of Jackson, New Jersey, the left-hander against the right-hander, Brian Smith from Oregon, looking for his first PBA title ever. In fact, as you look at Brian there on the left, his best year was back in 97. He made about 29,000. Guess what? He can make 40,000 big ones tonight. First look at Parker Bone the third. Big hello goes out to his kids, Parker and Evan. You know they're watching Dad right now. Did you expect anything else from this guy? Does that, let's be honest, does that put more pressure on Brian right from the start? I mean, does that intimidate him at all? <laughs> well, it, it sh I mean, he shouldn't allow that. He shouldn't allow any kind of pressure to, to just because Parker's thrown one shot. I mean, it's the first frame. You know, he still has his mental agenda that he's uh, he's going through right now in his checklist. Bottom line, Ryan's just trying to make good shots and strike. Don't worry about what Parker's doing. There you go. Thank you. First TV show he has made in about a year and a half, the last being at Akron. He was all fired up last night in the round of 32, then in the round of 16, and he dusted off Del Ballard last night, three zip. Said at the opening, top of the show, Brian Smith's been bowling as good as anyone out here. In my opinion, he's got one of the best games to come along in a, a very long, very long time on tour. It's very solid. And right now, Brian's been working a lot in his mental game, and he's got confidence. Solid game and confidence is a very good combination. Works out four or five times a week. Runs about a half hour every day. Does push-ups and sit-ups at the hotel. He's got that little McGarrett 5-0 do going, too. Like and, that. And a good look from ground level. A little bit like his brother, who competes in sprint car racing. Now Parker, that's striking the post. Good shot, just leaving the seven pin. Getting back to Brian Smith's brother. His nickname is Crash. 
wonder if that has anything to do with the sprint car. Well, Brian didn't do so well with it. There's Leslie, Parker's wife. Leslie's dad is also here tonight at Spectrum Lane for Grand Rapids. And through the round of 32, Mark, Mr. Bone. Then in the round of 16, and a terrific match in the round of eight last night right here at the Spectrum Lanes against everybody's favorite hockey goalie, the Finn, Mr. Mika. Mika Koivuniemi. Try saying that three times real fast. Strike in the first, spare in the second, strike in the third for Hall of Famer Parker Bone, the left-hander. No nonsense right out of the gate. Both, both players hitting the pocket with each shot. Parker going strike, nine spare strike. Brian said last night the key, and he knows he's up against a Hall of Famer, to advance, to winning, patience, don't get down on himself to stay grounded early in the match. I, I think also the key for Brian Smith is he needs to get a break or two. Some of the other finishers we mentioned at the very top of our live telecast here. It's been a, literally a grueling week of competition, hasn't it? Very tough. The conditions being brutal. The format's very tough. Lots of games, the head-to-head -head competition, knowing that you lose, you're out, you go home. A lot of pressure. Smitty at double and seven. Oh. Well, that's the second time we've seen that spare miss today. You cannot leave the door open like that to the veteran Parker Bone. Well, we saw it in the first match. Walter took advantage, didn't win the match, but you, know, you expect a player like Parker Bone to just jump all over that. And what's, what Brian Smith needs to do now is need, he needs to regroup. He knows that the shot he made on, on lane 30 wasn't a good shot. Needs to come back on lane 29, make a good shot, strike, move on. Brooklyn. And you know, he talked at the very top about the fact that Smitty rooms with Chris Barnes, who has won out here in the PBA Tour. Has that been an important influence? I, I really think it has. I think it's helped Brian a lot to mature out here mentally. Physically, he's always had, uh, as we take a look at Brian's, Brian's shot crossing over, what we call the Brooklyn, tripping out the 6'10". Nice break. But I think it's really played a uh, big part in Brian Smith's success here early on in the first four weeks of our new format, our new condition. Rooming with a winner has never hurt anyone. You know, speaking of winners. Strike spare and the double for Parker Bone up by 15. Watch the head pin get slapped silly. Here goes to the sidewall, takes care of the other three, three pins over the corner. And what a great reaction. Parker loves it. All four shots in the pocket for Parker. Which tells me he's got a pretty good line. Now all it is is just repeating shots. Leslie looking on. And she can kind of see herself up there on the other screen out of the corner of her eye. So she's not going to What a great shot again. Strike spare and the triple up by 25. Brian Smith needs to take advantage of that Brooklyn. It's trailing by 25. Needs to regroup. The last two shots were a little, little shaky. What's the difference between Brian today versus the Brian of a year ago, a year and a half ago? I, I think it's just all mental for Brian. He's really worked hard on his mental game. Been seeing a sports psychologist. He's always known that he's had the physical abilities to play out here, you know, and to be a winner out here, but now he believes it, and that's why he's been bowling so well the last month. Were sports psychologists in vogue when you were bowling? No, I could have used one. Not again. Oh! All right. <laughs> I think the wind knocked that one over. You could have gone to the shrink on Law and Order. <laughs> If you want to find out how Randy came up with that tie-breaking format, all the latest PBA news, stats, and information can be found at the PBA's official website, pba.com. The site featuring current and past tournament results, schedules, player bios, and action photos. That's all at pba.com.
get you that flame ball right there, Jim. Make your 10 pins with that. Oh, what a break. Watch this. Watch this. Oh. I actually have a bowling ball given to me as a present by one of our directors. All right. And he had it. He had my name put in it. He went to have the engraving done. He said, uh, is this for Jim Kelly, the golf announcer? The guy at the lane says, no, Jim Kelly, the bowling announcer. <laughs> True story. So, do you have holes in it Our yet? Our director cracked up. You have holes in it? I have not had it drilled. I'm waiting till we get to Reno. Okay. Roger Anderson will do it there in Reno, right? Good guy. We are live at the Spectrum Lanes. The PBA has rolled here to Grand Rapids in the Great Lakes Classic. $200,000 on the line, $40,000 for first and $20,000 for second. And a great crowd here at the Spectrum Lanes in Grand Rapids. Randy Peterson's alongside, and we're all watching Hall of Famer Parker Bone looking for his 28th title. One board difference relates to the accuracy. Take a look at this guy here. That, I mean, this is why the guy's won 27 times and why he's hitting the pocket every ball. He's missed his target by one board one time, and look at the accuracy of the speed. That's phenomenal. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. Well, Parker remembers one shot in his Hall of Fame career, and all I can tell you, he advises all of you not to try it in your living rooms. In Toledo one year, I went three games consecutively hitting the pocket without a double. So I picked up my ball to shoot a seven pin in the 10th frame. It stuck in my hand after I used a lot of rosin. The ball went straight up into the air, actually brushed the ceiling. When I actually heard it, I stepped to the side, the ball come crashing down on the lane, nearly killed me. Do not attempt that at home. <laughs> He's a trained professional. That's right. Parker Bone. Five in a row. Using a little bit of his maple moxie all over Brian Smith like a raptor on a pork chop right now. Strike spare five bagger. Parker's reaction. Six out of seven frames, all ten have fallen. Now Smitty down by 46. Get it going. It's a great shot by Brian, but you know what, I, I think that, I, I think Brian's using the wrong ball. I think he needs to use a different ball. I think he has to be too, too perfect. I think that ball has too much surface on it, and I think it's too difficult for him to get to the hole. I think he needs to go to a ball that's a little shinier, something that reacts a little bit harder in the back end. And if he doesn't hit the pocket here, I, I'll bet we'll see him make that ball change. Okay, maybe we won't see that ball change. What do I know? I think Smitty and his ball rep knew what they were doing. Well, that's why he's down there and I'm up here. Brian looks real relaxed. He, uh, he just needs to start throwing some more strikes. For his sixth in a row. I think Parker's got the right ball in his hand. I knew that. Parker Bone working on six in a row. Parker Bone is just storming his way into the final. He's mowing him. Seven bagger, flushed every ball. Watch this reaction. Parker's going to high five this guy over here that he owes money to. Parker saying, now, I've got my own website. <laughs> Don't forget, log on to parkerbone.com. Yeah, B. Ryan Smith, he's making it look respectable. Oh, and we talk about Spectrum Lanes, a great week of hospitality here in what has been a grueling, gut-wrenching week of competition. Mike Eaton, the proprietor, he'll be giving out the check and the trophy a little bit later on tonight. This is a big week, I think, for Brian. I mean, he's going to earn a nice check, right? And I think it can set the tone. And I agree with you 100%. He's going to take his experience from this week, and he's going to go to the next week and apply it, and the week after, 
And you're going to see more of this young man right here. He's a great talent. He's a great guy. And now he's getting a little bit of confidence. There I was think, a lot going on upstairs. I mean, let's be honest. The computer was a little bit overloaded mentally, don't you think? I think so. I think he had a little bit too much food on his plate. And the picture, the mental picture, wasn't clear. And right now he's got a good picture. and He knows what he's trying to do. Just a matter of time before this guy wins. Four ten, Parker advances. So Parker into the championship match against either Steve Wilson or Pete Weber. The next semifinal match, straight ahead. So Parker with a strike in the first, nine, and a convert in the second, and then a freight train. Literally, the Hall of Famer rolls on. Next up, Steve Wilson, Pete Weber, live from Grand Rapids. A lot of enthusiasm inside Spectrum Lanes and a chilly fall night. The final score, semifinal match number one, and Smitty ran into a freight train with Hall of Famer Parker Bone, 266 to 221. In that first matchup, in the wild card, it was Steve Wilson, 222 to 211, as we check our Bayer brackets here at the Great Lake Classic. Well, we talked about the pool. We talked about the horseshoe pit all screened in in Walter Ray's home in Ocala. Sorry about the tape problem, but we've got it for you now. Hi, I'm Walter Ray. Welcome to my home. Come on in. We've got the uh, dining room here, which we use at least two or three times a year. We've got a kitchen, which will remain perfect since we use it, oh, about once every week or two. One thing I really wanted was a, a nice little TV like that. Uh, this is the channel I like to watch the most, probably, is Tech TV. They've got a lot of information on uh, computers and stuff. There's my wife's page. She's actually uh, helped with the design of the house and everything else around here. One of the things I uh, really like about this is we got the horseshoe court back here, which uh, isn't really set up for the uh, amateur horseshoe player. It's actually set up more for somebody like me who's a little better than the average person. I've got my own horseshoes. Everybody that plays competitively has their own horseshoes. And these are actually uh, horseshoes that have my own nickname on them, Dead Eye. Now, if I just do that every time, I'd be world champion. Problem is, I don't. Okay, let's see some more of the house. And uh, coming this way, we've got the uh, master bedroom. And over here, we have Paige's very small closet. For those of you... Uh, if you feel sorry for Paige, you can you can look at my closet here. It's it's almost as big. <laughs> well, almost, not quite. This is really where I spend most of my time when I'm at home. This is in my my little office, trophy room. My wife calls it the shrine. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of our house. I gotta grab some lunch, so you guys get out of here, and I'll see you on the lane. Bye. Thanks. Thanks to Walter and Paige for opening up the house. He needed only one more title to tie Mark Roth for second on the all-time list. He will not move up tonight, but another who could is with Randy. Parker Bone, great display of accuracy and speed control, and the results were great. You struck a lot. How do you carry this momentum into the title match? We're going to try to repeat 12 shots just like those first 11, so I need one more extra shot under my belt, and I think I can do it. Sounds pretty tough, Jim. What do you think? I think that his ball speed in that game did not vary more than four-tenths of a mile per hour on all the balls that he rolled strikes. It was pretty remarkable right there. Speaking of a remarkable record, how about 26 PBA titles? That's what Pete Weber is looking at if he wins here tonight in Grand Rapids. The right-hander, 39 years of age, out of St. Anne, Missouri, up against Steve Wilson. He got through that wild card match in the semifinal match number two. See if you can see what he's doing already, working with the feet, making sure. I mean, it all starts with Steve with the footwork. Footwork and leverage. And a nice bar reaction doesn't hurt any.
And Pete does wear his sunglasses at night, unlike that singer. I can't remember the guy's name, but evidently they're working out nicely for Pete. How he advanced to make it to the TV show, the round of 32, then beating Brian in the round of 16, and in the round of eight against Walter Ray, but again with the best average and the best match play, the Ocala, Florida native advanced and was in as the wild card, but ousted by Steve Wilson, 222 to 211. <laughs> Pete with a strike and now two in a row. Uh, oh, you think Pete's fired up? The pains on his neck get ready to pop. Watch this ball peel on the back end. That ball's dead flush. Take a look at our cats and our number. Pete's reaction. Come on. <laughs> he will, he'll get in your face. Oh, he will. See Wilson using two different balls. Weber. Oh, I'm sorry, Pete Weber. Steve Wilson says, hey, I'm not the only one to work the crowd here. This hasn't reached the intensity of that Ernie Schlegel, Patrick Allen match yet, but that was kind of a dogfight, wasn't it? I mean, there was some serious, they were like Ranger fans up there in the blue section going at it. Well, Ernie was trying to use that, that old school stuff on Patrick Allen, and Patrick Allen, he would have no part of that. He took care of Ernie. They were trash great. talking. <laughs> it was a great, exciting match. Wilson loves this format, but says it's emotionally draining. Well, he's drawing on some of that drained emotion right now. How about a triple? Stevie's opening up the lane a little bit more than he did his first match. Now, Pete with a strike in the first and a strike in the second using two different balls. using on the right lane a little softer reacting the ball he uses on the left lane is much stronger so we take a look at our all-time leading money winners 2.5 for walter ray 2.2 for pete weber his dad the legendary dick weber is bowling tonight in a senior event there is tracy pete's wife i think the wives sometimes have have the worst of it or at least they look like they're more nervous don't they <laughs> they do Wow, solid nine! Nine pins, the last bit of the fall. That nine pin would have stood up, Pete would have ran down there. That time. Chewed the top of it off. Strike here, we're all even through four. Steve Wilson, right lane. A hook. Again, he got it to that zone where the ball is just not going to grab away and hook up. Take a look at Stevie's profile and footwork. The key for Stevie's got to keep his angle, his body angle forward. Don't get his shoulders too far back. This ball just too far right. Fortunate to see the two pin. Right now, Stevie's having a little bit of trouble with the approach on that right lane. Weber, up 11. What about the changes that you've noticed that Steve Wilson has made in his game? Worked with Hall of Famer Dave Davis on his body position. He's trying to get his shoulders a little bit more forward, and what that does is it creates a bigger flat spot at the bottom of the swing, and with a bigger flat spot, he's able to repeat his release more often. Right now, Steve's looking at that shot going, why didn't that ball hook back? And why didn't it? Well, the only thing the only thing I can say is that he probably threw it a pinch hard. That that ball was in the right zone, just didn't hook up. 2 8 10? Yeah, just looked a little bit firm. Need some luck right here. So after three strikes and a spare, open in the fifth. Now the fiery one, 
Weber gets a strike here after Wilson's open, you're going to see Mount Vesuvius. Just full-blown eruption. Petey front five. He brings that legendary name, the powerful game, and the fiery demeanor, and it's not an act. I mean, he says, I'm going to be me, and they can like it or lump it. <laughs> Pete's never been one to pull punches. One of the greatest players, in my opinion, that's ever thrown a bowling ball. What a start. Six in a row. Sounds like the Jerry Springer show here, doesn't it? Pete, Pete, Pete. We are live at the Great Lakes Classic. They're on their feet. Pete Weber, six strikes in a row. What a start. This was the last strike by Pete Weber, number six. And the react. <laughs> Get out of his way. Take a look real quick at what Pete Weber's done with our Kegel Training Center CAT system, computer-aided tracking system. The right lane, he's, remember, he's using a ball that's weaker, a little bit further right. Stevie didn't like the way he threw that ball. The ball just set up and laid right there in the one three. Over his shoulder when he was getting ready, you might have seen the two wives talking. They are actually seated side by side, Tracy and Sarah Wilson. Tracy Weber. So after open in the fifth. When your opponent has rolled six strikes in a row, how do you stay in it? Start striking and put some heat on him. Get up in his face, maybe do a little trash talking like Patrick Allen did last night. Try to get your opponent flustered. Come on. Oh! A little Tomahawk 10 action for Steve Wilson. Sure as that, come on. Touch of class there. You saw Tracy Weber applauding. <laughs> yes, well, she's... The Webbers are class acts, but take a look at this. Watch the six pin lay in the gutter and just lean on the six, on the ten. What a great break. He goes, yeah. I love his reactions. Beat now for a seventh in a row. Come on. Well, he can get the ten out with the best of them. Pete Weber, front seven. There have been 14 televised perfect games in the history of the PBA. Take a look from the pit. Six pin goes to the wall, crushes the ten and a half. Right now, Pete Weber, four strikes away, five strikes away, excuse me, from perfection. Oh! Fourteen televised perfect games. Mike Miller, the last to roll 300 on TV, beat Danny Weissman and Tim Chris. That shootout match at the National Bowling Stadium Open in Reno. Maybe tonight. <laughs> He's having a little fun. What do you think, Jim? <laughs> no secret here. Stevie's got a strike. Come on. There you go. Says, I'm going to make this guy Weber earn it. See, Wilson strikes out. He's got a possible 255. We all know what Pete's doing. I think the interesting thing we want to look for when Pete gets up is that Pete told us last night the best thing he can do when he gets up on the approach is just put his hand in his ball and go. 
Don't stand on their approach forever. Put your hand in your ball and just throw it. Just go. The worst thing Steve Wilson can do is $10,000. Come on. There's another $10,000 bonus here in this new elevated PBA. $140,000 or 140% the prize money is up. A perfect game. That's another 10. Yeah. Pete was saying last night, just get up and bowl. Don't think. His tendency when he starts to make bad shots is to overthink. Puts his hand in his ball. Watch how fast he goes. He's going to put his hand in his ball. He's going to look at his target, and he's just going to go. Get a good feel. Get a good grip. His wife, Tracy, watching on. Wow. <laughs> Not short on reaction, is he? Watch the back end. This is why Pete Rubber ro ro rotates his hand around the ball to get this ball to hook in the back end. I don't know if it can get much better than that. You can feel the electricity. We will talk to Pete Weber live when we come right back to the Spectrum Lanes. How good was it? Watch Pete Weber's reaction. Strike. After strike, after strike, after strike, and one away, 299, he advances, just awesome, he's down with Randy. Pete Weber, great game, 299, tell us what was going through your mind when you got up for the 12th one? Don't throw it too slow to go high, so what do I do, I eased up on it just a little bit, didn't quite get it out far enough, and it just hooked high, so... Oh, well, got another game to go, though. One more game, title match against the great Parker Bone III. How do you keep the momentum going? Game's over with Randy. Got to move on. It's a new game. Got Parker Bone to deal with. He's going down. Wow, sounds like he's ready, guys. What do you think, Chris? What do you think, Jim? Tell us. Bring it back to you. Back to you, guys. We're going to try to get Randy some decaf and calm things down, but we've got a lot of electricity here at this Spectrum Lanes. It's time for our pros approach, and we'll see what our sidekick, Randy, has on tap for us tonight. Hi, today I'm with Jason Couch, and uh, Jason is going to talk to you a little bit about equipment. You know, Jason, back in the day, it seems like you could have walked into any bowling center with just one ball. Uh, in today's game, it's definitely not the case, is it? You're absolutely right, Randy. Today, I carry 30 bowling balls with me on the PBA Tour. 30 bowling balls. <laughs> well, explain to me why. 
Well, because you bowl on synthetic lanes, wood lanes, different oil pattern every week, you need what we call an arsenal. Mm -hmm. Today I've brought an arsenal in that I think the league bowler will definitely benefit from. Okay, well give us, uh, give us your take on what you got here. Today we started with the plastic bowling ball. Mm -hmm. I typically shoot my spares with this bowling ball. Now would this ball be uh, good for, say, a beginning bowler? Great ball for a beginning bowler, absolutely. Next we step into a low-end reactive bowling ball, good for when the lanes are dry, maybe the third game of league at night, or a late block on the PBA tour. Okay, how about this ball here? This is a high-end reactive bowling ball. Has a great deal of hook to it. Second, third game of league, you know, might might wear out a little bit for you, so you might want to start with it uh, right at the end of the first game. Uh, a, a, uh, kind of a intermediate player. Would, Absolutely, this would be uh, beneficial. Correct. Uh, and I'm assuming this is the the big monster. That's the big monster right there. That is a particle bowling ball. It holds the lane a great deal. It's a big hooker, and what you use that ball for is fresh conditions. If you're just starting out on that 6:30 league or 9 o'clock league, that's a good ball to start with. Great tip from Jason Couch. If you want to play like the big boys, get yourself an arsenal. You guys think about it. Well, Jason Couch is on the couch back in Claremont, Florida, lamenting his Redskins start. We check our Bayer brackets. So a nice check, $10,000 for Steve Wilson. A terrific effort, two ninety nine, And the emotion, the electricity of Pete Weber. And we've got a Hall of Fame matchup coming up next. The finals of the Great Lakes Classic. Two Hall of Famers. Pete Weber and Parker Bone. Welcome back to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Home to the Arena Football, the 2001 champions, the Grand Rapids Rampage. They've been on a rampage here where Pete Weber had them on their feet at the Spectrum Lane for the 299. So Pete trying to tie his dad, who's actually bowling tonight, winning for the 26th time. Pete, if he were to win the $40,000, up against Parker Bone, who ousted Brian Smith earlier, 266 to 221, to make it into the championship match. Now, since you did not pick either of these two to win earlier, about 60 minutes ago, we'll give you another chance. <laughs> I'm not picking. You pick. I like that better. Okay, I'll pick Parker. You know, you were talking about thinking maybe that Smitty was not using the right ball, right, because of rotation in the surface. But interesting in talking with Parker, he thought the key to winning and advancing, he has three balls out there, and the right ball selection was crucial because... Well, if he could get to the hole, if he could get to the pocket with the one ball, he stayed with until the lane's changed. And when that ball stopped working and started backing off down the lane, he'd go to a stronger ball. And right now he's going to his bag to get another ball out. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, he's getting tape. Yeah, the ball would be rounder and the tape would be on the roll. <laughs> okay, just, just work with me here. Let's see if Pete Weber still has anything left in the tank. Quick answer to that question. He has not missed on lane 30 yet. Prodigy rolled a 312. Wow, maybe tonight. <laughs> Pete Weber is just flushing every ball in the 1 3. I wonder if they've got ESPN on in the lanes where Dick Weber is bowling. I wonder if Dad is able to watch, huh? I guarantee you, he's getting a shot by shot. Replay, information, everything. Three hours away up North Michigan. North Michigan. He's got his runners going back and forth. Two straight spares for Parker and two strikes in a row in frames one and two for... Pete Weber, Parker saying, hey, I'm in the Hall of Fame, too. What about strike percentage here in the round of 16? Parker had the best strike percentage, 64%. Pete had the lowest. Isn't that amazing? Because Pete's the one throwing all the strikes.
Parker Bone is so consistent because? He's got great timing, he's got great feel, and he repeats from the start of the foul line to the start of the approach to the end of the foul line. That's not good. Right now, it's obvious that Parker doesn't have the same reaction that, he's, that he had in the previous match. What Parker's going to do is he's going to try to get the ball on this side and slide this four pin into the six. Hope he takes care of the ten pin. Yeah. Well, that's not, real good. that's not a real good thing for Parker, considering this gentleman right here has not missed the pocket. 299 the game before. Spare, spare, and open in the third. And again, Dick Weber has not missed on lane, th or Pete Weber has not missed on lane 30. Well, with 25 PBA Tour titles, this Hall of Famer has an awful lot of memories, but one of his more special memories involves, well, another Hall of Famer. Guess who it could be? When my dad won, in uh, the Touring Players Seniors Championships, I think it was in 90, 94, he became the only man to win in five different decades. So that was like a big thrill for me to see him finally do that. Over on lane 29. Four in a row. P. Weber's taking it to Parker. If there's anybody here at Spectrum Lanes that has not given up on this match, he's on your screen in the green shirt right now. It's going to be interesting to see if Parker's going to make that ball change. It looks like he's lost his ball reaction. Talking to him earlier, he said, you know, when, I, when, when things start to go bad, I start to lose my reaction. I, st I immediately switch balls. I wouldn't wait much longer with Pete doing what he's doing. himself on the back. How about four straight strikes, though, for Pete Weber? This is in this match on lane 30. And over on the other side on 29. Third frame, back to 30. And over on 29, four in a row. 11 of 12 strikes. How about 15 of 16 on the night? <laughs> Pretty solid. He's making the lanes look easy. They all look the same. It's incredible what he's doing, his ball speed, his direction. Off his hand, every shot is the same. He's created a little bit of room on the lane for himself. Swings nice and loose. When the ball does hit the pocket, it strikes. It's a little soft, went high, got a good break only leaving before seven. And from ground level, 16 of his first 17 balls were struck. So he's kind of in the bone zone. Hall of Famer Parker Bone, Hall of Famer Pete Weber, the championship match with 40,000 in the title on the live when we, on the line when we come Back live, the Great Lakes Classic. There's the crystal, 40,000 in the check still to come to either 
Hall of Famer Parker Bone or Pete Weber. Coming up, well, we'll be in Taylor Lanes, Taylor, Michigan, in suburban Detroit next week. Another $200,000 of PBA cash on the line. And then, of course, the PBA Johnny Petraglia Open, another Hall of Famer there. How about the seniors? Seniors uh, Jackson, Michigan for the Senior National Championship. Going on right now in Jackson, Michigan, where Dick Weber is bowling tonight. Come on, Dick. He's in 16th going into tonight. Now Parker Bone working on a strike. Needs to start striking a whole lot. Zone bringing it back. We've seen some great bowling this week. I mean, earlier action, Chris Barnes, a winner a couple weeks ago. He picked up that nearly impossible 7-10 split, right? Yeah, we, he picked up the 7-10 split this week. Last week we saw two people pick up the 7-10 split. And in four shows so far, we have seen 18 different bowlers with only two repeats. One of them on the screen right now. Down by 45. Parker looks frustrated. He looks confused. And you don't see that. Usually what happens when you when your bar reaction leaves you, when you, when you don't know what it's going to do when it leaves your hand. Yeah, yeah, his ball speed for Parker, you were down doing the interview in that first match against Brian Smith didn't vary by more than four tenths of a mile per hour on all of his strike balls. So he was in the bone zone. Styled in, he had a good reaction. When he let go of it, the ball did what it was supposed to do and now it's going all over the place. Take a look at Pete Weber and the glove that he's wearing. Finger inserts they used in his bowling ball, he used to cut his fingers, now he uses the glove. A golf glove that he cuts the thumb out of. He got ready during the offseason. I mean, he worked out with weights, got that five foot seven frame, 140 pounds into prime condition. He wants to be the bowler of the year, the player of the year. I mean, his goals, not lofty by too many standards. Well, you know, P can do whatever he sets his mind to. He's always had the physical talent. Pete in complete control of this match. Parker's lost his ball reaction. Pete's pretty much flushing every shot with the exception of the one in the sixth. Possible 258 for Pete Weber. He gave that one a little extra stare. Unfortunately for Parker, he's completely lost on the left lane. <laughs> hey, you gave me $10 to go easy on you. <laughs> Parker said he's going easy on, on Pete. <laughs> a little bit of a bemused grin there on Parker's behalf. Parker's a great sport. And right now, Pete Weber says to himself, Hey, Dad, guess what? We're tied. Oh, baby. Oh. I didn't really worry about it anymore. Terrific, terrific bowling by Pete Weber. He is the winner at the Spectrum Lanes. It'll be title number 26 that will tie him with his Hall of Fame dad, who's bowling in Jackson, Michigan, not far from here. PBA Tour title number 26 for that Hall of Famer, and it's the only father-son combination in the PBA Hall of Fame. Almost the 300 game. He didn't even... Footwork doesn't matter here. This is just Bill. 
Uh, How about the intensity here about a half hour ago, huh? Well, yeah, Pete's a, he's a lot of fun to watch. When he gets it going, he starts striking a lot. There's no better show anywhere in the world of bowling than this guy. Pete, a great player. Parker's on the third Hall of Famer. Still one behind you. I have a feeling I might be more behind you before the swing's over. Is there any money at stake now? I mean, are they just saying, come on, 50 for the last frame? It's like a, 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 a buck a shot right here. Whoever strikes doesn't. Or maybe a nice Cabernet. We'll come back and talk with Pete Weber. You come back with us live to the PBA Great Lakes Classic. What a night of bowling. In the championship match, two Hall of Famers, and it was a Hall of Fame night here at the Great Lakes Classic. Two Hall of Fame wives, Leslie Bone and Tracy Weber right there, were the champion. You know, you had this crowd alive. How intense were you out there? Uh, well, I know when I won in 98 at the Nationals, it, it was, I was pretty intense, but I just put that to shame right here. And if you guys don't know what I'm thinking now, you want to take a look, I'm back. And I am P.D.W. You told me last night that you just get up there and visualize, but when you get into trouble, which you weren't tonight, you sometimes overthink. I mean, when you were rolling eight, nine, ten in a row, what thoughts were going through your mind? Well, actually, sitting off the approach, I was thinking about uh, where I was going to go tonight, play a little golden tee golf or something like that. Then as soon as I stood up, it was down to business. I thought of what I needed to do to get the shot off my hand, and I just did it. Tracy's not supposed to wear red on television. Is that red or burgundy? It is not red. It, it, <laughs> you want to talk about red, you need bright red. There will be no red on TV for me. What about the off-season? I know you worked out with weights. You worked on getting into, into better shape, and you got yourself into shape mentally as well as physically. All right, You came back fired up and with a kind of a new, renewed dedication. Well, it really wasn't I worked out with weights. It was, a, it was a total gym where I used my own body weight. And it was really just to tone, tone my arms up, tone my legs up so I felt that I could last out there. As far as mentally, hey, I've always thought I was the best. And until you go out and do it, you, you doubt yourself. I have no doubts anymore. The people that were watching at home on ESPN know that you tied your dad. The people here at Spectrum Lanes may not know that with his win here tonight in front of you folks, he tied his Hall of Fame dad with 26 PBA titles. Hang on, hang on. Stay with me. Let's all listen in live on the telephone because we got a special caller from Jackson, Michigan. Uh-oh. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pop. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. You'll get 26 more. Yeah, I, I hope so. Beautiful bowling. Sir. Yeah. Beautiful uh, bowling. What, what are you doing over there? How are you bowling? Well, I'm uh, 580-some over, but uh, I'm well, yeah. game and trying to bowl my game, and it's very tough. Well, you just might see me tomorrow, then, if you keep it up, and make you make sure you get number 27 and okay. go past me again. Okay, well, I'm going to wear some uh, dark glasses tomorrow, too. All right, Pop. Right. Hey, hey, Dick, when you won your 26, what was your winning check? Do you remember? Uh, I think uh, Justin Romack and I uh, got uh, something like uh, 15000 apiece. And, and 40000 for your son here tonight. Do you need to take out a loan, Dick? I do. I'll, I'll see him. Uh, what do you mean? I can pay the money I owe him back. back. <laughs> <laughs> that includes you too, Mom. <laughs> Well, a couple of Hall of Famers, Dick Weber bowling in Jackson, Michigan. Congratulations to our champion here, another Hall of Famer, Pete Weber. Next week in Detroit, you'll be there, right? Oh, you definitely think I'll be there. You know I'll be there. I'll check with Leslie. Is Parker going to be there? We'll all be there, too. We hope you'll join us live as the PBA Tour rolls on to Taylor, Michigan next week. Coming up next, it'll be Chell's wonderful world of golf. Jack Nicholas up against Ben Crenshaw. What a night we've had here. For Randy Peterson and all our PBA ESPN bowling team here, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to PBA and ESPN.